Hey everyone, and welcome to my Procreate demo for the piece I call Traveler Monk. Now, we're going to do something special this time. Um, so this is only a line drawing. I haven't done any other work on this other than lines. There's no colors, no paints, no anything. So this Procreate demo is just going to be about me drawing. And now the reason for that is because I want to give this line art at the res that it's at as a Procreate file or a PSD, either way. But Procreate would be cool since this channel so far has been all about Procreate for any of you to download it and work with it. And the thought behind this is that when I was learning how to paint and color and all that, it was way easier sometimes for me to just use somebody else's lines, and then I don't have to think about the design or the character or uh, any, any drawing technique. I could just spend all of my energy on painting. So I thought this would be something cool for those of you out there who maybe are really trying to work on your Procreate painting, and you don't want to have to worry about doing a character design. So I've included this file, and the download link is below in the description, and it has all of the layers in it that I ended up with at the end of the drawing. That way you can go through and you can actually look at the layers that I had, you could just sort of see the rough design if you want to, and then you can also do whatever you want with those line layers uh, when you're going into painting. So I hope this is something cool that everybody really digs, and then I really hope that you guys will share with me, anyone who decides to color it um, in any way, uh, share it with me and then I can maybe feature it later on uh, once I sort of figure out how I would do something like that. Um, so without further ado, here's the actual demo part of the piece. So, per usual, I start with a rough sketch. Now, I didn't go through a, as far of a development process as I did with the Grigori video, or the Grigori piece. Um, this was me just sort of sitting down and saying, hey, I want to do something full body, I want to do a character that's got a decent amount of detail about them. After the last piece, which was the zombie one, which was more about it just being fun and brightly colored, and, and it's relatively simplistic as far as the character design is concerned, I wanted to do um, this full body. At the same time that I was doing this full body on a separate um, file, I was doing a portrait of a character, a popular character, so I'll put that one up uh, in the future because uh, I'm actually working on that one today. Uh, but as far as uh, this is concerned, it was all about just sort of like detail and like a pseudo medieval sort of character, and that's ju it just sort of all developed organically. And my son, when the piece was done, he kept asking me where the guy in his stomach was. And I couldn't, for the life of me, figure out what the hell he was talking about. And then it finally dawned on me that lately my son's been watching a lot of the original Ninja Turtles cartoon. And I realized how much this character actually does kind of look like Krang's big bodysuit. And he was basically asking where Krang was in the suit, um, which was pretty funny. So now I feel like I'm obligated to uh, draw that thing at some point. Um, but I was clearly subconsciously uh, influenced by it since now that I look at it, this character looks a ton like the uh, the general shapes and the face and everything of that character. So that's, uh, that's sort of how things can influence you and you don't realize it. And then a three and a half year old can point it out to you because it's totally obvious. So with all of this, I just basically did a rough body type. I thought it was okay. Um, the last two sort of, or I don't know if it was the last two, but the last few full bodies I did were really skinny. So I wanted to do somebody who was like a little bit beefier, maybe not as beefy as my Hakan piece, but just a little bit beefier. So I wanted this guy that was sort of like this big stoic, um, maybe a fighter, maybe one of those characters that you can't, you don't realize is a fighter or he, he seems like he could fight but then he doesn't until like way later in the show or you know something like that. That's how I like to try and think about it. So um, I just really wanted to layer on like a bunch of junk on this character. So that's sort of that's sort of the entire thought process behind it originally. And then I just wanted to pick a couple of opportunities to do something unique like this cowl thing that's on his head with the bandana over it. I just thought was kind of fun and something that I don't traditionally do. Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of the entire thought process behind designing this guy. So I take some opportunities here to zoom in on spots. Um, I don't know if the resolution is going to hold up. I only worked at this one at like 8 inches by 12 inches. That was the size of the piece. It's at 300 dpi, but that's still a relatively small canvas when you're trying to blow things up for like 1080p like this, but um, but I think it'll it'll hold enough so that you can at least see what I'm doing. Um, so per usual, I'm using my fat pencil that, again, I get a lot of people asking about the brushes. If you go back to my piece, my video for the piece Palmas Mit Mayo, you'll see um, me break down my brushes. I've never changed those brushes since I did that, and they're not even custom brushes anyways. They're really just barely adjusted brushes from Photoshop. So I highly recommend that if you're looking to do interesting brush stuff, 
the best thing to do is instead of just downloading brushes from other people is to go into the brush settings and actually mess with them yourself and try to learn what the different brushes do and all the different parameters because otherwise you could end up hunting for a brush that does a thing that you wanted to do and you never find it when in reality you could have just gone in and adjusted a couple things and then you have a new brush. That said, I know it's fun to download brushes and try out different things, um, but I'm just not that guy. I'm not the guy that you're going to be downloading cool brushes from because I very rarely use uh, custom brushes. So at this point, I'm just sort of zooming in on the head so you can see everything that I'm doing um, on the uh, the headband and, and the head area. Um, I always am, that's the thing that I like so much about working on uh, the iPad is that I can just sort of cuddle up on the couch and draw, or I can be in just sort of like weird configurations and still draw or paint. In fact, throughout a majority of this piece, my dog was either sleeping on me or my kid was trying to over the shoulder art direct, which seems to be his new favorite pastime. So there's times where like, you'll see me really jack something up while I'm drawing it, which is sort of cool that it captures all of that because you get to see that like, it's not always a linear process. Sometimes I'll draw like a hand or a finger and then I'll work on something else because my time's being divided. And then when I come back to it, I'm like, what the hell was I thinking on that hand? That hand looks like shit. And then I'll go back and redraw the hand or something. I think if you go back a little bit, you can see on the headband there, I really struggled with the headband. And sometimes you don't even know where that kind of a struggle comes from. It just seems to come out of nowhere. And you're like, why can I not draw this thing that I've drawn like a million of, right? Like if you, if you draw fantasy stuff or you draw stuff for video games or comic books, you've probably drawn a million headbands, and then right then and there, I just couldn't for whatever reason. So, pretty interesting, art is like that. Art can really, uh, art can be a really fickle thing at times. So now here I've just sort of pulled out um, so that we can see the general, uh, what's, what's happening generally throughout the piece, which right now we're working on the his right sort of armband thing that's like either part of his backpack that's holding it on or maybe it's just part of his outfit. Who can tell, really? Um, so uh, that's just me going in and doing that sort of uh, banding, that ribbed banding that, that we see a lot in fantasy art. Um, and then uh, going through and adding some thick lines. You'll see at times, this is something that I've always struggled with in digital art is uh, because you're zooming in a lot in order to get what you really want, you lose sort of the grander scheme of things and that's rarely you're rarely losing the grander scheme of things as far as composition goes but definitely as far as line weight i've lost i lose my train of thought a lot when i'm working digitally in fact i would say if i rewind about nine years or so ago that was probably my biggest challenge was maintaining the right type of line quality that i wanted throughout the entire piece so even even now you'll see me on this piece put in a bunch of stuff that's maybe of a certain line thickness or a certain line quality, and then I'll go back later and add like a much bolder line around certain things, and that's just because, you know, you when you pull out and you really get to digest it, you see like, oh, that section's not separated out that well, or I could really improve the blocking if I, if I gave this part like a, a thicker outline. So you'll see that as a recurring theme throughout this piece that I go back through. Like everything you're seeing right now on these pouches, I later go back and put a thicker line around the entire pouch region you could say so right now just adding the stitching in the front and now we're jumping back over to his right sleeve and we're basically replicating what happened on his left sleeve over on his right sleeve Oh, there we go. Also adding a couple of extra details in those pouches. Um, part of the interesting thing I've mentioned in the past about this is because I really only feel like I ever get like 15 minutes at a time on any of these is I go in and I do a chunk of work and then because of, you know, just a minor amount of fatigue or, or annoyance with an area, I'll just move on and it probably should have been done way better. And then what happens is I come back an hour later and I've got another 10 minutes to work on it and I look at something and I'm like, shit, that's, that's, bad looking. I should probably make that better. So for instance, on that pouch, I had no snaps on it whatsoever because for whatever reason, I just stopped working on it. And then when I came back to it, I was like, ah, that needs snaps. That needs to actually be finished. So sometimes you're your own worst enemy when it comes to how much work you need to put into a piece. And it can actually go either way. You can either totally bail on a piece and you totally should have put more work into it or you find yourself working on something way too long and it needed to be left alone and now it's just tortured. So here we're just finishing up his uh, tabard, I guess, the lower part of like his tabard or his loin, his loin piece. Um, and uh, now we're just doing sort of like these side, these side pieces that sort of drape down over his legs. In a second, I 
go back in and I do, oh, here you go. You can see right here, I'm doing an outline on the, all the pouches and everything on his belt because I felt that that wasn't getting the proper amount of uh, separation and it wasn't being given the proper amount of weight. So that's why I went in there and did that. So now we're doing the other side of the leg. And then in a minute, I believe, um, if it's not in a minute, if it's not in a second, like, sorry about that. But um, I, I go into the detail on that tabard and I, sh I sort of demonstrate a technique that I use a lot in Photoshop, but you'll see it here. Um, it's a little bit harder to pull off just because of the limited tool set in Procreate, but uh, in general, you can see what I'm talking about. I'll bring it up if I do it. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so right here. I basically just created a vertical line because I wanted everything on that tabber to be symmetrical. And then I'm using the technique in Procreate that where you can hold your finger down and you can hold the brush down and you can do straight lines. I essentially just build that logo as if it were its own thing like its own thing on a flat surface which is here I've repeated it so you can see it again and then after I've duplicated it and flipped it and then merged it into its own layer I distort it so that it fits that tabber properly in my rough sketch properly then the last thing I do is I just go in and make sure some of the lines are beefed up because I built it bigger and so the lines get shrunken down when you go to adjust it down there so that's a really good way to do like patterns and things like that or symbols that you want to hold true um, so in Photoshop or excuse me in Procreate whenever you put down a stroke if you don't leave your finger up or excuse me if you don't pick up your pencil then it will snap to a straight line and you can if you're still holding down the pencil you can adjust that straight line and then while you're doing that if you take your other hand and put your finger down on the canvas it'll snap to like 40 degree 45 degree increments or 35 degree some some sort of increment there and uh, that's really helpful for especially for a symbol like that where it's really geometric So now we're just going in and doing the other glove. As you can see right there, I just took my rough and adjusted the wrist a little because the uh, the sort of continuous line of his arm felt a little bit weak. And as I was doing this, I was starting to think to myself like, eh, do I really want like this fist? Like a fist is not interesting. A fist is a really easy way um, to just have a character be. Um, and so I think that a lot of uh, artists, including myself, we sort of just pencil in a fist real quick because we're like, yeah, and then he'll be making a fist. But very rarely does anybody stand making a fist unless they're doing something really dynamic, which is the right time to use it. You know, like Captain America looking up at the sky, ready to leap into battle. Like a fist is just kind of boring. So as you can see here, I start to put in the fist and then I go, you know what, like I'm going to open up this hand a little bit because at least an open hand is slightly more interesting than a fist. So that's, that's what just happened there. I, I decided, nope, and then I just penciled in a, an open hand real quick. It's just sort of a more relaxed uh, look and it makes more sense and it's just kind of neater to look at than something that's just basically like a big block. That said though, a fist looks awesome when it's like in a more interesting perspective. If a character is like punching the screen or making a fist because they're grabbing like a big lever or something as they're pulling it and the lever's like in your face as far as the camera's concerned. Like that's a cool, that's a cool fist, but just a character standing there making a fist is kind of meh. Which is why also when you look at that other hand, like, like look at his other hand now compared to the hand that's more in the foreground and it's, it's just really boring now, especially because it's almost perfectly in profile. Um, so that's just, that's, uh, that's what I'm talking about there. So you'll see when I get to that hand, I open it up to. I think that hand when I open it up also is what I was referencing earlier where I totally screw up the uh, finger and it just looks like shit and then I go back in later and fix it. So here we are just working on the right glove. I wanted to give him just a very small amount of asymmetry. So the asymmetry is in his pouches and the asymmetry is in the fact that one glove is rolled up and the other glove is not. And that's it. Um, I wanted him, you know, you can tell, you can tell a lot about a character in character design. Um, that's obvious, but then you can even do it in much more subtle ways. So I like to think that with this character, the fact that he doesn't have much asymmetry means that he's a fairly stable character among some of the other character design choices that were made across here. He sort of fits into that mold of the, the stoic, reliable muscle type character. And so um, I wanted to make sure that uh, I still gave him 
a little bit of interest. Like for instance, his pouches probably wouldn't be 100% symmetrical because over time he's carried different things in different pouches. And then with the glove thing, maybe there's a reason one glove's up and one glove's down. Maybe it's his way of expressing himself, but at least it's a minor way to give him just a little bit more visual interest and make him feel a little more interesting. Maybe the bandages that are on his left wrist are because he hurt himself, so he's keeping that open. Maybe they're just also part of his style. But the idea is that overall, he's fairly symmetrical, except for a couple of little things. So we just got done um, drawing in uh, most of the his right boot. Now we're just sort of finishing off the toe area. Um, I didn't continue to zoom in on this because uh, I do post these videos at 1080p, so hopefully they're still very visible. You can totally see what's going on when you watch it, especially on a bigger screen, um, but, but yeah. So now we are on to the left knee pad. Um, and I believe I just go right through and get this left leg done. Let's see. Yeah, and then I did that little bit of a scoot down right there because I was feeling that his um, leg wasn't appearing long enough, his upper leg wasn't appearing long enough and that his lower leg was just too long, um, which sometimes, sometimes you can push anatomy like that and it works in your favor, but I just didn't think that it was really working this time. Now, I've talked about it before. Oh, here we go with me thickening a section so you can see some of that happening across the illustration, going around the shoulder right there. And then, so I've, I've talked about this before, um, but uh, I want to mention it again the way that I use layers, um, which I'll be getting to a Procreate demo where I show all of this very, very soon. Um, I, I, when I get to a new section, I just create a new layer and I start penciling on that layer because I want to make sure that I have editability to go backwards. Um, when I work traditionally, which I know you haven't seen that on this channel just because I haven't set up filming something like that, but when I work traditionally, obviously I don't have that kind of a capability, but I also have much more of a tangibility when I'm drawing naturally or traditionally than when I'm doing it here. So using all these multiple layers is basically a way to sort of overcome the uncertainty of whether or not I'll be able to do something in a digital medium. If I end up doing it fine, then cool. And a lot of the time I don't have to do that extra layer. It's just nice for that one time where you completely screw something up and then you can just delete that layer and start over or adjust it or move it or something like that. So, um, so all these layers get created throughout the process, but then they get collapsed down as things are decided to be final. So here we go now on his right hand. Um, you can see I'm opening up the hand. Uh, some of the base shape is very similar to the, uh, original fist because he doesn't have a completely open hand but then you'll see here that one finger is like really whack and then I made that thumb too short so I extended it I mean you can see that's what I like about this is that it, it shows absolutely everything it shows like all the mistakes and all that so you can see that everybody screws up all the time so there we go now I open up the finger more I get a better shape out of the hand and now you can start seeing I put in the back finger and then it all starts coming together more now I'm just finishing up all the details, making sure that it has more or less the same design as the other glove. And now I had this theme running through the entire piece of this like black triangle thing. It was really just like a thing that I put in. Then when I put that little soul patch on him, I was like, oh, that's kind of funny that his soul patch mimics the thing on top. And so then it just became a bit of a theme, like maybe whatever he's a part of, like worships the black triangle or something like that. I, it's, it's all... It's all who knows, because this wasn't made for anything specific, but it's kind of fun to, to start coming up with stuff now that all of that's been put in. So now here I'm just wrapping up the backpack. Um, the backpack's fairly simple since he covers most of it. Um, there, I had an idea of making the backpack like really big. I mean, it's obviously big because with his head height and the size of his hands, he's obviously a huge character. But um, if I made the backpack really, really big, then that would throw off his proportions quite a bit and it wouldn't make him look as big anymore. So I wanted it to be big. I wanted it to be a little ridiculous that he has this big backpack of who knows what on his back. But I just didn't want it to be so overblown that it diminishes his form. 
So now we're wrapping up. The last thing I do is I duplicate the lines, I slightly blur them, and I lower the opacity just to sort of soften the look overall. And I delete, or I turn off the, the sort of rough lines underneath. So that's the completed piece. Um, relatively straightforward. I did what I wanted to do. I put a somewhat detailed character together. And then um, I'm going to put the link in the description below if you'd like to download the dot profile or the dot PSD file and work with it. Um, that would be super cool. I'd love to see a lot of procreate people out there now who've been um, looking at a lot of the videos and sort of digesting how to do things it'd be cool to start seeing all of those people take the lines and do something neat with it um, and uh, otherwise uh, I just thought it'd be a fun thing to share so as usual thanks for watching I uh, hope you like and subscribe and I'll see you at the next one and if you're looking for me on the internet these are the places where you can find me